now we will work on the contrast using curves. So let's get started. All right, so first shot here is from Northern Norway, uh, the beautiful coast at the Lofoten Islands. One of my favorite places on earth, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who thinks that. So yeah, I, I thought it's a good, a good example image. And what I want to do here is I want to further emphasize the wave action here in the foreground and at the same time add some punch to the sky. That's what we will do with uh, curves adjustment. So first of all, let's go to curves again. And this time we have, first of all, we will add a whole bunch of highlights. So to do that, I will shrink the histogram so I make it smaller. And right now I'm only looking at the waves here in the front. So I will make it a, add a lot of highlights and at the same time darkening the midtones a bit. So it's not yeah, too strong. And now we have this nice effect here on the waves. And now we will invert the curves. Use our white brush with like 55% opacity. And now we're painting here in the front to add some really nice contrast to the waves. And also here. It's too strong there, so we can repaint. Not a problem. Oh no, I like it there. And when we only want to enhance the contrast, not the color, we can change the blend mode to luminosity and then we are only enhancing the contrast. But in this case, I like what it did. So we will keep it on normal because it also enhanced the magenta reflection from the sky here a little bit. So I like that. Okay. So when you have like a flatter tone, which you want to enhance, it's okay when you add like a whole bunch of contrast because it, when the tone is flat already, it needs that contrast to make it stand out. And when you paint it in locally, it's always you always make sure that you don't overdo things because you have, you have a lot of control doing that. So you can always um, start with an extreme adjustment and see if you like it and lower it down if you want. So uh, you have a lot of control, like I said. Okay, now we will add another curves layer. It's important to use multiple curves layer because curves layers, <laughs> because when you do everything at one, uh, yeah, you don't have this nice local control anymore because uh, maybe you want one adjustment only in this part and one adjustment in the other part. And when you can't combine it in one curve layer, it will look messy quickly. So stack them up. That's easy. All right. So now we want to enhance, enhance contrast here in the sky. And I will use this picker here to see where the tones actually are. When you see the curve here, then you see where the tones are going on. Somewhere around in the middle, of course. So what we will do again, first of all, we will add a whole bunch of light. And now we will bring them back again. And you see this way we are enhancing contrast. So we're here around in the mid-tone area, something like that. And when we invert it, we can paint it again to the parts where we want it. Also a bit here in the waves, not here. And also not up here or not that much here in the mountain. But definitely in this corner, that's where we wanted it. All right, let's turn it on and off. Some nice contrast effect. And we can do the same thing with the other side. In this case, we will pick our hand again and see Yeah, we're also targeting the midtones, but we also have to make sure, we also yeah need to make sure that the brights here won't get blown out. So first of all, let's uh, lower the brights by quite a bit, invert the mask, and we will paint this adjustment inside here. 
and also a bit here to the clouds so it's a bit more contrasty but not here we won't get a lot of detail in there because it was a bright sky as you can see when you have low clouds like this and no high clouds this the light behind the low clouds still has a lot of power because there's it's not softened by any high clouds or fog or whatsoever so when you have gaps in in low thick clouds you will get a lot of brightness between them and it it, it, intru it increases the contrast really nicely most of the time okay so now we darkened everything a little bit and what we want to do now is we will use curves again check the tones we want to adjust somewhere here in the middle so now we will drag down the midtones a bit more and also add some highlights so it's not too uh, flat and when we now paint to like 55% opacity again on the area we wanted to adjust we get some nice contrast up there as you see and when you let's say you want, don't want it let's say you want it a little bit more feathered you can always use like 10% opacity black color and paint over it again so it's feathered out so you see it when I show you the mask you see now it's feathering out a bit better All right. And now one more thing. I want to add more contrast to this part of the waves. So to do that, we will grab another curves layer, use our hand here and see which tones we are targeting. Something like that. They're really flat. So let's now brighten them at the same time maintaining the darks something like that also add some white okay invert and now we will paint it on the waves here okay. it's important to maintain the darks otherwise you will have flat yeah dark tones around the waves but in this case we only want to target the waves so too strong here and maybe with a bit less opacity also this part and maybe also here all right let's group it and you see some nice contrast going on and when you don't like it or let's say <laughs> when you think it's too strong you can always go down with the overall opacity if you want something like that okay so now let's uh, work on the second image a nice forest scene and in this case I want to brighten the forest here a bit and also up here and maybe add some contrast to the water and to do that we will first of all go to curves again and we can of course also work with the blend modes if we want so when we use screen you see it brightens everything quite a bit and at the same time we can now work with the curves again to maintain contrast and maybe yeah overcome the effect when it's too strong something like that and when we turn this on and off you see we have a nice brightening effect in this case we want to darken it a bit more so it's not too strong like i said no. Okay, and when we now invert it, we will paint locally again to the area we want to enhance. A little less opacity, but you see it works really nice. perfect I like it and again when it's too strong you can of course also can go down with the opacity 
So that's a really nice way to use curves when you combine them with a blend mode. Screen, multiply, uh, soft light, so ever, what's, whatsoever. It's, it's, it's really nice. All right. Another curves adjustment. This time I want to add punch up here. So first of all, let me grab the hand. It's again somewhere in the middle. So let's darken the midtones and at the same time punch, uh, add in some highlights. And you see now we have a nice effect up there. So now we will invert it again and we will paint it where we want it. Something like that. And if we don't want it there, of course, we can repaint with black to remove the effect. All right. And now one more thing here to the water. Again, the curve adjustment, pick our hand and you see it's more in the bright tones, of course. So we will add highlights but at the same time maintain contrast and invert it. And now we will paint it down to this area. Something like that. Really simple, but powerful. Nice. All right, and one more thing. Let's say you want to add a little mysterious feeling to it. What I like to do is I like to pick curves and drag down the middle part so the midtones are darker. And at the same time, I like to up the shadows so it gets a little bit washed out, but just a smidge. So it looks a bit more foggy and misty because of the brighter shadows and lower midtones. As you see now, it's a less contrasty and a little bit more mysterious. And if you don't want it that strong, you can kind of, of course, always go down with the opacity. Okay. And lastly, I want to add more contrast to the leaves up here. So what we will do, we will go to curves again and add a whole bunch of light and at the same time darken it so it's not yeah, too contrasty. Invert it and let's now paint again to the part where we want it. In this case, we probably don't even have to lower it. We will brighten it a bit more. So we're brightening the midtones and also the highlights. And then we paint around where we don't want it. We're maintaining the dark tones in the forest. Okay, something like that. Nice point of interest. And when we group everything, you see we did quite a lot. And it was actually really simple. We didn't use any luminosity masks. Of course, we can do it. But yeah, this tutorial is not that much about luminosity masks, but uh, of course they are really powerful combined with curves, but you can also work without them as you see here. Really nice. Okay, so that's it with contrast adjustment, guys.